Women retain and carry living DNA from every man with whom they've had sex, according to a new study. The study, which discovered the startling information by accident, was originally trying to determine if women who have been pregnant with a son might be more predisposed to certain neurological diseases that occur more frequently in males. But as the scientists picked apart the female brain, the study began to veer wildly off course. As it turns out, the female brain is even more mysterious than we previously thought. The study found that female brains often harbour male DNA that originated from another individual and are genetically distinct from the cells that make up the rest of the woman. According to the study, 63% of females harboured male microtumorism in the brain. Male microtumorism was present in multiple brain regions. So 63% of women carry male DNA cells that live in their brains. Obviously, the researchers wanted to know where the male DNA came from. Anyone care to guess? From the woman's father? No, your father's DNA combines with your mother's to create your unique DNA. So where else could it come from? Through the study, the researchers assumed that the most likely answer was that all male DNA found living in the female brain came from a male pregnancy. That was the safe, politically correct assumption. But these researchers were living in denial. Because when they autopsied the brains of women who had never even been pregnant, let alone with a male child, they still found male DNA cells prevalent in the female brain. At this point, the scientists didn't know what the hell was going on. Confused, they did their best to hide the evidence until they could understand and explain it. They buried it in numerous sub-studies and articles. But if you sift through them all, you'll find the damning statement, the one line that gives the game away and explains exactly where these male DNA cells come from. What are they so afraid of? Conclusions. Male microchism was not infrequent in women without sons. Besides known pregnancies, other possible sources of male microchism include unrecognized spontaneous abortion, vanished male twin, an older brother transferred by the maternal circulation, or sexual intercourse. Male microtumorism was significantly more frequent and levels were higher in women with induced abortion than in women with other pregnancy histories. Further studies are needed to determine specific origins of male microtumorism in women. So, according to the scientists, the possible sources of the male DNA cells living in the women's brains are 1. An abortion the woman didn't know about 2. A male twin that vanished 3. An older brother transferred by the maternal circulation or 4. Sexual intercourse Considering the fact that 63% of women have male DNA cells residing in the recesses of their brain, which of the above possibilities do you think is the most likely origin of the male DNA? The first three options apply to a very small percentage of women. They couldn't possibly account for the 63% figure. The fourth option is rather more common. The answer is four, sex. This has very important ramifications for women. Every man you absorb sperm from becomes a living part of you for life. The women autopsied in this study were elderly. Some have been carrying the living male DNA inside of them for well over 50 years. Sperm is alive. It is living cells. When it's injected into you, it swims and swims until it crashes headlong into a wall. And then it attaches and burrows into your flesh. If it's in your mouth, it swims and climbs into your nasal passages, inner ear and behind your eyes. Then it digs in, it enters your bloodstream and collects in your brain and spine. Like something out of a sci-fi movie, it becomes a part of you and you can't get rid of it. We're only now beginning to understand the full power and ramifications of sexual intercourse. 